Hello everybody, it's Dr. Rick dropping in on you. Hope everybody's doing good. Uh, this is gonna be a real quick uh, contribution. Uh, hope that everybody's doing well. Uh, don't forget, we are in the middle of a fundraiser. If you believe in the work that we are doing on so many different levels and so many different ways, if you follow, you know. If you, know, if you don't know, the link to the organization's official website is in the description box. Check us out. But we need your support. This doesn't happen uh, through magic or osmosis. It requires resources. And we literally have far more to do than you can even imagine. And uh, through these series that I started last week, each week a new series last week was the miseducation of black youth uh, in America. This week is going to be uh, the impact of multi-generational transmission of trauma. I did the intro for that earlier uh, and uploaded it. Uh, the series starts in full on tomorrow and there's so much more. Uh, I was just sitting up and I was thinking as I'm on my way to go kind of unwind, uh, I was sitting up and I was thinking of just how devastating the disintegration of the black family nucleus has become um, and it's not by accident it is an orchestrated uh, dynamic uh, that has happened over time uh, and and I, I actually believe personally based on my research based on my understanding of history based on my expertise in the area of sociology and psychology it is my belief and my firm holding that one of the greatest accomplishments of systemic racism was to convince black men and black women that we didn't need each other, that we were uh, by nature each other's enemy. Uh, it does not in any way suggest that there aren't issues that we need to deal with in-house. We need to completely reconstruct and redefine uh, the definition of black man. We need to understand the dynamic and responsibility and role of black women. Uh, we need to uh, rescue the force of unified uh, cooperation in the rearing of our children. Uh, and I'm not talking about this cultural, social uh, paradigm of co-parenting when you got to do it because things didn't work out or somebody was really doing things that were destructive or disrespectful or uh, dishonoring, uh, you have to do what you have to do. But uh, there's far too many of us procreating outside of marriage. There are far too many of us uh, abandoning marriage when marriages can actually be saved. And please don't jump on here with all the stuff that people are doing and going through. I'm not telling anybody to be in a situation where you're being abused, mishandled, disrespected, and that goes for men and women because men are abused too. Men are disrespected on too. Men are cheated on too. This is an equal opportunity fuck fest if you want to be honest about it. I do the work, I do the research, I deal with the fallout. Here's the thing. This is just clear and understood. Anybody who's done research, anybody who understands historical uh, implications understands that when you have an imbalance and something that's literally historically designed to create a specific thing, that thing doesn't turn out as well as if it was whole. So when you remove either the feminine or the masculine energy from the home, you remove an implement and mechanism and component of holistically developing a child. Can't get around it. I don't care how great of a dad you are, you can't replace her. I don't care how great of a mom you are, you can't replace him. There's no such thing as I'm both mom and dad. You may be carrying on some of the roles of where your partner should be, and that's a problem. Nobody should be doing this by themselves, period, male or female. Uh, it's producing a diminished result that's showing up in our inability 
to do things for ourselves, to position ourselves in a point of power. And it is the core foundation of how we develop. You develop the mindset for business ownership in values and interests and principles taught in the home to children at an age when they're still developing. The developing mind is in a state of theta. That means it's downloading all the information it will use to operate and function and move throughout the course of life. If all this child is getting is disruption, dysfunction, toxicity, and a suggestion that white is better because white people have the power and we're just fighting to stay alive and they're smarter and they're better and all this other bull crap that's moving down the pipeline in so many subliminal ways you can't even believe or begin to count how this stuff is being pushed. I'm not talking about the obvious stuff. I'm talking about the things that are so uh, subliminal that you probably don't even catch it, but it's happening every day. And the subconscious mind is absorbing it. And at the age, ages of seven and less, that mind is absorbing it at an even more rate because there are no filters to guard against it. And the responsibility of the uh, to create these filters starts with masculine energy by the man, feminine energy by the woman. And this isn't some docile versus power, uh, apex, uh, alpha bullshit. This is saying that there's certain thing a man does. The man is the source of both children's male or female's identity. It's where they develop a sense of self. Mom is the teacher, the nurturer, the establisher of first truths, first truths and principles. And it's a natural nurturing thing. It's not say, okay, I know the, I know all the steps to do to do this. I'll give you a prime example from from a male perspective. I'll give you a prime example. Um, social learning theory tells us that while we tell our kids a lot of things, primarily the things they learn is through observation and emulation. They tend to emulate what they see. So little girls want to be like their mom. Little boys want to be like their dad. So even something as simple as moving from peeing, sitting down to moving to peeing, standing up is done by watching dad do it, not by somebody telling him. Uh, can it be circumvented? Can it, can it be? Yeah, absolutely. But more likely than nine out of 10, a little boy sees a man that's a bigger man and says, I want to be a big boy. I want to be a man peeing. And they start trying to pee standing up. It's just certain things that come naturally and it goes so much deeper than that. But that's the thing that we are missing is, okay, then there are the values, interests, and principles. You can't teach social responsibility to a grown person or even a teenager when they've never seen it, they never understood. You can't teach financial responsibility. You can't teach uh, economic empowerment. You can't teach uh, group economics. You can't teach wealth building. Uh, once it gets to a, a, a point with ease, you can ch anybody can change. But on a collective level, the best time to teach children is when they're in that state of development, where they're learning what they can do, what they can't do, what's possible, what's what's required. That's why our rite of passage program starts at the age of four. Why? Because we want to download in them just a certain thing that they should just have inculcated deeply into their re the recesses of their soul and their psyche is that this is what a man does. I'm just a little bitty boy now, but when I be when I become a man, these are what these are the things I'm going to do. It's just going to be a part. Of, I'm, I'm not going to have to second guess it. There are just certain things I, I'm not going to put my hand on a woman. I'm going to get a job, or I'm going to start a company. I'm going to hold down my family. I'm going to protect the women, the children, and the elders in my house and in my community. Why? Because that's what men do. As a woman, I'm going to carry myself in a way that represents my family. I'm going to sit up and I'm going to be a strong representative of what's necessary in the family. And if that means that I am a homekeeper, there's nothing wrong with that. If that means that I'm a part of the business, nothing wrong with that. If it means I've got my own job, there's nothing wrong. But it has to be a community effort. And I have to understand how I work and how I fit and how my gifts, which are immensely powerful, are used in this family. And when we don't do that and when we don't train that and we don't teach that, we rob them of the ability to come together and do what other groups are just naturally doing. Or is there toxicity and dysfunction in every group, every other racial group? Yes. We are the least likely, we are the least capable of being able to manage and handle that though. White people hold the power. They can have dysfunction. 
because they can literally sit up and fucking redefine dysfunction and toxicity. That's what they're doing. That's what they're doing when they constantly dump that stuff us on us and say, this is who you are and this is the reason this country is the way it is. That's them controlling the narrative. That's not the truth. That's the narrative. So they control the narrative. So their dysfunction is actually playing out in the narrative. We don't have that, we don't have that luxury. We aren't writing narratives, we're living them. So then we must change the narrative, not from what we from what they create, but from how we live. And that means that we're going to have to really visit the idea of restoring the black family nucleus. They've even got us believing that we've never had a true black family nucleus from the traditional sense, and it's bullshit. Uh, up until 1960, 75% of black children were born in a single parent household, so that's bull. Uh, I mean, uh, in the two, the two parent households. So they were born into a traditional house. That started to change when they literally started to policy family disruption in the black community. Is, is our family the way? We're not talking about cultural issues. We're talking about structure. Structure is structure. You need masculine and feminine energy. Are, 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 are there ways we're going to have to deal with this now that we have this mess? Yes, but that has to be systematically addressed. Not everybody's just reaching for clouds and stars and hopes and wishes. We've got to come together and say, okay, this is where we're at. How do we fix it? How do we start moving back towards what held us strong? How do we come out of slavery and immediately go to stuff like Tulsa and, and Rosewood and Slocum, uh, Texas and Wilmington, North Carolina and East St. Louis? How do, how do we do that? How do we get to the point to where we're buying up and owning and creating business? How do we get to where we owned all of, we owned our own bus companies, cab companies, cleaners and, and everything in, in most major cities? How do we get to that coming first out? We had a specific code that we no longer had. We operated in a unity. Blackness mattered to us. Now it's just a battle cry when we get angry about some stuff and want to throw a fit. It's not how we operate. We can't stand each other. We compete with each other. We talk down on each other. We trust them more than we trust ourselves. We'll trust stuff they push on us before we'll trust somebody trying to help us that looks like us. I see it every day. Those are the things we've got to address. So, with that being said, look, I'm already here. I'm about to jump out of here and get in. I'm already a few minutes late. Uh, but look, if you believe in the work we're doing, show some love, show some support, click the box, uh, go on there, find which way you want to give, how you want to give, and do it. We need your support. But uh, get ready for these series. They're going to be coming every week. This week is uh, the impact of multi multi-generational trauma on the black community starts tomorrow you can check the intro out go check the intro out it's already up so go check the intro out but the uh series starts tomorrow on that note i'm out of here